The Rangers have two big-time aces in the farm on the verge of developing and dominating again. Back in 2018, North Oconee High School, nestled 60 miles from Atlanta, Georgia, possessed one of the top pitching prospects available in the country. Kumar Rocker was a two-sport athlete, however, baseball came to the forefront during his sophomore season. As a freshman, Rocker wasn't even the ace of his high school staff and only clocked in at 82 miles an hour. It was his junior year where the world began to take notice after an 8-mile increase as Rocker now sat at 90 miles an hour. Although it was no secret he planned to honor his commitment to Vanderbilt, during his senior year of high school, scouts flocked to games to watch the talented righty. Kumar's high school coach mentioned that school would end at 3.30 and players and coaches would head to the field by 4 for 6 o'clock games, but scouts would already be in the stands closely observing every move Rocker made. More than 800 miles to the north, there was a talented junior named Jack Leiter who was taking the northeast by storm. A familiar name, Jack the son of former big leaguer Al Leiter, was carving up hitters at the Del Barton School in New Jersey. In his junior season, and he posted a 0.64 ERA in 54 innings and punched out 77 hitters. Leiter's standout game was a 17K 7-inning performance versus Pequinock. By the end of the 2018 season, Leiter had completed his junior year in high school, and as I mentioned earlier, Kumar Rocker had solidified his commitment to Vanderbilt and was chosen in the 38th round by the Rockies. Rocker went on to have arguably the greatest freshman season ever and anchored a Vandy staff that not only took home the national championship, but won a school-high 59 games. He made 11 starts with a 2 2.17 ERA striking out 82 in 70 innings. He saved his best performance for when it mattered the most going 4-0 with a 0.96 ERA in his NCAA tournament starts and made history in the process. In a do-or-die game with Vandy's season on the line, Rocker delivered an unforgettable performance in the Super Regional against Duke. He etched his name in history by hurling the first ever no-hitter in Super Regionals, striking out 19 hitters on 131 pitches. It's fair to say that this performance could easily be regarded as one of the greatest college games ever pitched. The season culminated in Vandy's victory over Michigan with Rocker earning the well-deserved title of College World Series Most Outstanding Player. He concluded the season with 12 wins, which ranked third in the nation and racked up 114 strikeouts in just 99 innings. Rocker's remarkable performance also earned him a spot on the SEC All-Freshman Team, in addition to winning the Freshman of the Year awards for both Baseball America and D1 Baseball. As Rocker wrapped up his freshman year at Vandy, Jack Leiter was in the final stretch of his senior year of high school, which was again a another dominant season. This time, the right-handed pitcher went 8-0 with a 0.60 ERA, striking out 95 hitters over 58 innings. Leiter's high pitch counts raised some eyebrows among scouts as he exceeded 90 pitches in six of his nine starts, even reaching over 110 in two of those outings. Despite Jack Leiter's status as one of the most highly regarded high school pitchers in the country, he remained strongly committed to Vanderbilt. Nevertheless, the New York Yankees made a surprising move by drafting him in the 20th round. Some speculated that this might have been a nod to his late father, Al Leiter, who was a former Yankee player. However, the Yankees front office defended the pick by stating that Leiter was the best available player, emphasizing the unpredictability in baseball. Indeed, Jack Leiter remained true to his commitment to Vanderbilt, joining forces with Kumar Rocker to form a scary one-two punch that could terrorize the SEC for the next few seasons. As fate would have it, we were stripped of seeing the duo for a full season in 2020 due to the pandemic. However, both aces pitched well in their limited outings. Rocker went 2-1 with a 1.80 ER array in three starts and held opponents to a 118 average. Meanwhile, Leiter shined in his collegiate debut, tossing five no-hit innings, striking out 12 versus South Alabama. He finished 2020 going 2-0 with a 1.72 ERA in three starts. 2021 would be our first glimpse of what the duo could do in a full season, and they did not disappoint. Just so you get an idea of what teams had to deal with, in Vandy's first SEC matchup of the season versus 16th ranked South Carolina, Kumar Rocker started Friday night going eight strong, allowing three hits and striking out four then Leiter followed that performance up with seven more no-hit innings versus Missouri, striking out 10 hitters. In total, he went 20 and two-third no-hit innings across three consecutive starts. Rocker finished the season going 14 and four with a 2.73 ERA in 122 innings and struck out 179. He became the second player since 1988 to lead the nation in both wins and strikeouts in the same season. On the other hand, Leiter's season was electric as he finished 11 and four with a 2.13 ERA in 18 starts and tied teammate Kumar Rocker with 179 strikeouts in 110 innings. He recorded 8 strikeouts or more in 15 of his 18 starts, with 10 being in double digits. Vanderbilt breezed through the Super Regionals and was headed to the College World Series just a few years removed from their 2019 championship. Once again, Vandy made it to the finals, but this time their journey was quite bizarre. NC State had already upset Vandy, pushing them to the elimination bracket, and in order to advance to the final, Vanderbilt would have to beat NC State twice. They took care of business in Game 1, winning 
losing 3-1, but the morning of the deciding game that would send either NC State or Vandy to the College World Series final, Coach Tim Corbin received a text message just 12 hours before the game, stating that the game was declared a quote-unquote no contest. This unexpected decision was due to a player from NC State who didn't meet the required College World Series health and safety protocols. Therefore, Vanderbilt was moving on to the College World Series final and NC State was going home. Vanderbilt faced Mississippi State in the final with Jack Leiter delivering a strong performance in Game 1, pitching 6 solid innings, striking out 8 to leave Vanderbilt to an 8-2 victory. However, Mississippi State won Game 2, forcing a winner-take-all. Vandy had Kumar Rocker lined up for a decisive Game 3, and the team was confident given Rocker's postseason success. To the surprise of many, Rocker struggled, giving up 4 runs on 6 hits, and didn't make it out the 5th inning. Mississippi State went on to secure the national championship with a convincing 9-0 victory. Just as everyone anticipated, both Leiter and Rocker were selected early in the 2021 MLB Draft. The Rangers picked Jack Leiter as the second overall selection, and Kumar Rocker was chosen 10th by the New York Mets. This made them the 11th and 12th top 10 draft picks during Tim Corbin's time as a head coach. Leiter and Rocker also joined a small group of players from the program who were drafted in the top 10 in the same draft. The only other instances were in 2007 when David Price and Casey Weathers were drafted, and in 2015 when Dansby Swanson and Carson Fulmer achieved the same feat. Leiter went on to sign for $7.92 million, which at the time was the largest largest signing bonus for a pitcher taken in the last 10 years. For those wondering how Jack was able to sign after only completing his sophomore season, while well, players attending a four-year college are eligible for the draft after the completion of their junior year or if they turn 21 within 45 days of the draft. On the flip side, Kumar Rocker had verbally agreed to a $6 million signing bonus, which was much higher than the recommended $4.7 million for the 10th pick. Reports indicated a dip in Rocker's velocity during his junior year, but he declined to disclose his medical information to teams before the draft. The New York Mets had concerns about his shoulder and elbow health, leading to their decision to not extend the contract offer. There were speculations that the Mets might have sought to sign Rocker for less than the slot value, but the deadline came and went without an offer being made. Rocker's agent Scott Boris claimed that multiple respected orthopedic surgeons found no significant medical issues. However, it later came to light that Rocker had shoulder surgery a few months after the draft. The Mets ended up with the 11th pick in the 2022 draft and selected Kevin Parada, a catcher from Texas Tech. Since the Mets didn't make him an offer, Rocker had the choice to go back to Vanderbilt, where he still had two years left of eligibility. Instead, he decided to sign with the Tri-City Valley Cats, an independent team in the Frontier League, in hopes of re-entering the draft in 2022. He excelled in five starts, posting a 1.35 ERA over 20 innings, striking out 32 hitters. Rocker's fastball impressed scouts sitting in the mid-90s and topping out at 99 miles an hour. Despite mock drafts predicting a mid-to-late first-round pick, the Rangers surprised many by selecting him third overall in 2022 and agreed on a $5.2 million signing bonus. Rocker was the first player since Mark Appel to go top 10 in two different drafts. In 2023, he debuted in high A and shined, pitching five scoreless innings with eight strikeouts. However, on May 11th against Bowling Green, after four scoreless frames to start the game, he ran into trouble in the fifth inning, allowing five runs before leaving the game with elbow discomfort. An MRI later revealed a torn ligament, and he underwent Tommy John surgery. He ended the season with a 3.86 ERA in 28 innings and struck out 42 hitters. He's expected to return to the mound in the second half of the 2024 season. In 2022, Jack Leiter's professional debut was a challenging journey. The Rangers opted to start him in AA Frisco and he struggled. His command issues were evident as he walked three or more batters in 12 of his 22 starts and ended the season walking 5.4 per nine innings. He finished 2022 going 3-10 with a 5.54 ERA in 22 starts and was even placed on the inactive list for over a week. The velocity, however, remained as he struck out a 109 in 92 innings. In 2023, Jack Leiter's command problems persisted right from the start. In April, he walked 15 batters in 20 innings and struggled with a 6.75 ERA in 5 starts. It was a very difficult season for him as he was placed on the development list twice. During his second stint on the list, his ERA was approaching 6 and he remained there for over a month before making a comeback on August 27th. Upon his return, Leiter introduced a new windup and showed some improvement posting a 3.38 ERA in September over 13 innings while only issuing four walks. The Rangers then decided to send Leiter to AAA alongside top prospect Wyatt Langford to end the season. In his one AAA start, Leiter struggled lasting only three and a third, giving up three runs on eight hits, including two home runs. Jack Leiter finished the season as the Rangers' fifth-ranked prospect, while Kumar Rocker held the ninth spot. The Rangers are banking on Jacob deGrom's return to his Cy Young form, and despite Rocker's injuries and Leiter's command issues, the potential upside combined with the emergence of 20-year-old Brock Porter to lead to one of the the most dominant rotations in baseball.